Hey guys, it's Riley with The Garage Learning and today we're gonna go over using an Arduino for stepper motor control. In this video, we're gonna go over the types of stepper motors we use. We're gonna talk about how an Arduino can work as a low cost controller. And we're also gonna talk a little bit about triggering, um, how Arduino can trigger other Arduinos or get triggered by an Arduino or a relay or all sorts of different things. So let's just jump right into it. So what is a stepper motor? Um, well, a stepper motor is distinctly different than other motors because they move in rotational steps. Most stepper motors have about 200 steps to a rotation, and inside of these motors are coils. Um, and the type of motors we use, there are two sets of coils connected to four different wires, um, two sets of wires. We call these wires A+, A-, B+, and B-, and these are basically just two sets of wires. Um, but depending on the amount of voltage sent to each of these four wires, the motor will move to a certain step and hold that position because the coil creates a magnetic field and makes the motor move. Now, because the magnetic field doesn't disappear as soon as the motor gets to where it needs to go, the motor actually holds its position. So let me say that again. Steppers hold their position. They exert energy while they're doing nothing. As long as they're powered on, they are using energy to stay where they are. Now that functionality is pretty cool, but it makes interfacing with them a little difficult. Um, with lots of other motors, you can just send DC or AC current to them and they'll just move. But with the stepper motor, you need a stepper driver to control them precisely. So a stepper driver, um, like this box here, does the precise voltage control on those four wires to control the motor and make it go where I want it to go. The way it does this is it takes in two inputs and controls the motor accordingly. These inputs are step and direction. They are both 5 volts PWM signals. Basically, direction tells the driver which direction you want the motor to step in. So if direction is low, it goes one way. If direction is high, it goes another way. And step is how many steps does it want the motor to move. So every time a pulse is sent on step, the motor moves one step in either forward or backward, depending on the signal it's receiving for direction. So the fact that most stepper drivers work well with PWM signals is great because Arduinos are great at generating PWM. What's more is this driver is looking for a 5 volts PWM signal and Arduino outputs 5 volts. So that makes it pretty easy um, to work with the two of these together. Furthermore, Arduinos have inputs and outputs, which means they can trigger other Arduinos, they can trigger relays, or they can get triggered by other Arduinos or relays. So this functionality is pretty awesome because it makes Arduino really easy to use with other timing control systems. Um, it can receive a pulse from like a triggers box that's running the timing on this and different motors. Um, and when it gets its pulse, it'll run its action and you'll have repeatable timed movements. So we'll hop into that a bit later, but the first thing we're gonna do here is talk about the basics of hooking up a stepper motor to a stepper driver and hooking up a driver to an Arduino. Once you understand how to do this, you can control all sorts of things like sliders or pan tilt heads or pours and rigs or really whatever you want. So this circuit is actually really simple. Um, I basically have two power sources. There's a 24 volt power supply and then there's a five volt power supply. The 24 volts is going to run the driver and the motor and the five volts is going to run the Arduino. I have step and direction signals plugged into pins eight and nine outputs on the Arduino. And that goes to the stepper driver, um, pulse minus and direction minus. Pulse is, is just step and direction is direction. And then the positives for both pulse and direction are daisy chained together. And then that goes to V in, which is five volts on the Arduino. You'll notice that there is one more port here that is empty. There's a enable positive and enable minus. Um, we're not gonna touch those because we don't want to uh, mess with disabling or enabling the driver. We just want it to be on the whole time. Now over here, there is a terminal for positive and negative DC voltage. This specific driver takes 24 to 50 volts, but you'll find a wide range of voltages out there that drivers support. And for simplicity, we're just gonna be running it off a 24 volt power supply because that works great. So the 24 volt power supply has its connections here to go to AC power. Um, and then over here, we have negative and positive running to negative and positive terminals on the stepper controller. Finally, there are our ports for A+, A-, B+, and B-. Those go to a 5-pin XLR connector with this pinout, and then that goes to a motor with another 5-pin XLR and the same pinout on it. So I'm gonna go over to my computer and open up the Arduino IDE and load up the first of a few sketches that I have down in the link description. 
So I've gone ahead and I've opened up um, Arduino IDE um, on my laptop and I've opened up a sketch that I found online and modified. Um, and this, uh, when uploaded, should move my motor forwards and then backwards. So let's go ahead um, and let's upload this to the Arduino. So that's pretty neat, um, but what else can you do with this? Um, so I'm gonna close this sketch and I'm gonna open up uh, one more. So basically this sketch is pretty similar, except uh, most of the code has been moved to the loop void um, and added into an if statement. So basically um, now it checks if a input is being sent to pin two um, on the digital input side of things. And if there is an input, then it runs the code. Otherwise it just waits and does nothing. So that's cool because we can run the code and it'll do nothing until it receives a button input or a trigger input. So I've got this button here. Basically I have two wires soldered to a button and one of them um, is split off with a resistor on it. I'm gonna plug the one that does not have a resistor on it into five volts. I'm gonna plug the resistor into ground and I'm gonna plug the other wire into pin two. And now, when I upload the sketch, um, when I press this button, the motor should move. So verify this, upload this, and nothing happens. But when I press the button, So that's cool. Um, if you wanted this to work with a relay, all you'd have to do is replace the button with a connector or something, have that run into a relay or a triggers box or something, and there you go. Um, I'm gonna plug it into our triggers box here. So here I have our triggers box. Um, this is what it looks like. Um, let's talk a little bit about how it works. So inside of here, there's an Arduino for control. We're using an Arduino Uno. That's kind of the brain of it all. And here we have our eight triggers. Um, four of them are closed loop and four of them are 24 volts. Um, we'll talk about what that means in a minute. Um, all of these ports connect somehow or another to relays. Um, relays are basically just electronic switches. Um, they have five terminals on them, one negative, one positive for powering it and then three contacts. Two out of three of these pins are connected at all times, and when the relay is given voltage, it will switch. So basically you can use it to have something connected at all times until it's turned on, or you can use it to connect something only when it's turned on. We use these relays to connect um, only when they are turned on by the Arduino over a protocol called DMX. So to reiterate, um, all of these are connected to relays. Um, these four, the closed loops just go straight to the relay, um, connected to the terminals that are not normally connected, so that when the relay gets power, it completes a circuit between the two cables that are plugged into it via that barrel connector. On the 24 volt outputs, um, when the relay gets power, instead of connecting the two input pins here, um, it sends one of those pins to ground, and it completes a circuit on one of the other ones, sending 24 volts positive um, to the other pin. So basically, when you give power to these relays, 24 volts gets sent out of these barrel connectors, and we use that to power solenoids uh, to control air. So we're not really gonna be using these much today because I don't have an air compressor here, but we are gonna be using the closed loop relays. Um, we can use one of any of these four to trigger this Arduino, just like a button would. So the idea here is I've taken the um, button off and put a barrel connector on this, and when I plug it in here, um, Let's choose port number four. Whenever relay number four gets triggered by the Arduino, um, this will move the motor. What's going on in here um, is there is an Arduino and on top of that Arduino is something called a shield. A shield is basically like an expandability board for an Arduino. Um, they plug right into the top uh, and they kind of just work, which is nice. This particular one is called a DMX shield. What this shield does is it allows the Arduino to communicate over DMX. DMX is a signal protocol with a whole lot of channels um, and 256 steps per channel, and that gives you a wide range of control over a lot of things. In fact, it's used all the time for controlling lights, um, and that's why we chose to use DMX to control these relays, because using the same code to control these relays, um, we can control our lights. So let's reiterate, um, there's an Arduino, there's a shield on it that outputs and inputs DMX. Um, we're using it to output DMX, 
So basically we write our code here um, and the Arduino sends the signals to tell things what to do. Um, in this case, the DMX is connected. It's hardwired to a relay board that's inside of here. Um, and that relay board has eight channels and that relay board runs over DMX, um, which means it can work with lighting boards, which is pretty neat, um, but we're using it with the Arduino. There are relay boards that connect directly to the Arduino and you could use that too to build a triggers box if you don't wanna control lights or anything over DMX, um, but our triggers box kit is going to run over DMX because we like that expandability. The only thing we haven't talked about is how you run it. There is a run button on the top here, um, or there are inputs on this side as well that you can use depending on how you wanna program it. We're just gonna be using the run button up here. Um, and so theoretically, if everything has power, if I power up this triggers box, plug this in, turn this on, and run the program, then this should move whenever this gets triggered. So right now I have a test program on the triggers box that cycles through all of the outputs. Um, here's what it looks like. Right now this isn't turned on. But you can hear the clicking, um, the mechanical clicking of the relays physically switching but the clicking confirms that the relays are in fact working. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug this in. Now it should be waiting for its button signal or its input or any input on digital input two. So let's run this program. Theoretically, whenever this relay in here gets its signal from the Arduino, then this motor will move. Moment of truth. That was pretty cool. Let's do it again, make sure this is working consistently. Yep, and I am pretty happy with that. So that is how you control a motor with an Arduino. Um, next thing I'm gonna do is make a little enclosure for all of this that makes it a lot nicer and easier to work with. So all of these parts here actually came out of an enclosure with the exception of this power supply here. So we're gonna go ahead, um, pull that over here uh, rewire all of it and show you guys how you would build your own motor driver box to be triggered by another Arduino. All right, so here we have our motor control box. Um, basically on the front here, I have a five pin XLR, a barrel connector and a button. These two are just in parallel. So they go to the input um, on the Arduino and that's our trigger. On the back here, I have an AC plug and a power switch. And on the inside, there's an Arduino Uno. Um, there's a voltage regulator. There's a 36 volt power supply, but this could be 24, 48, 42. Like seriously, just give the stepper motor whatever it wants. And if it gets hot, then drop the voltage or amperage. Um, but basically uh, we're gonna recreate the circuit that we had out on the table here on the inside of this driver box. The only difference is now instead of a button or a barrel connector, um, I'm using both and they're gonna be in parallel so that if either of those inputs get triggered, um, the Arduino gets its signal. So basically um, the power supply goes through the switch and then feeds the voltage regulator, which sends five volts to the Arduino. Um, and that's all I've got going on right now. Um, so here's the stepper driver. I've undone the DC power connections as well as the um, phase wire connections, but I left the step and direction and five volts and I'm gonna get some double-sided tape and probably mount this guy in here. So I've double-sided taped this guy up to the side of the box here. Um, and now I'm gonna go ahead and start running the connections. So with that all connected, we should have a fully functional motor driver box. We have our driver on the side here. We have our phase wires that go to our five pin XLR. We have our Arduino that connects to our trigger inputs. We have our power supply that connects to the motor driver as well as this voltage regulator, which powers the Arduino and all that. And then of course there is a power connector and a switch um, on one side so we can plug it into AC power. So there is our motor driver box. Let's go ahead and plug it in and make sure everything lights up. Awesome. So we've got green light on the motor driver box. Arduino is doing its thing. And then we have the voltage regulator powering it. So pretty cool. Unplug that. I'm gonna go upload the code really quickly because there's a different Arduino in here. It's a new Arduino. And then we're gonna go ahead and test it out. All right, so I've got our triggers box here. I've got the motor driver box that we just made here. I've got a motor plugged into it. 
and I have a cable plugged into our trigger input here and our trigger output on the triggers box. I believe I'm using number one. So what should happen is as soon as I run this program, um, as soon as relay number one turns on and then back off, um, as soon as it turns off, this should get its signal and run the program on the motor. So here we go. It's on and off. Sweet. So as soon as it shut off, this got its signal and that is good. So essentially, if you wanted to work with multiple motors, you could write a program for this triggers box to trigger the motors um, really whenever you want along that program. And then you can write the individual motor programs um, on each Arduino in each motor box that you have. So for working with multiple Arduinos and multiple motors, that is definitely the route to go. It's not so easy um, or reliable programming multiple motors off one Arduino. In another video, I hope to jump into the details of this trigger box. Um, we definitely will at some point, just hoping it's soon. But for now, I hope this was a good resource and I hope you guys learned something. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you guys try something at home with this information and I'll see you guys in the next one.